Hello everyone, and welcome to Biopedia. This week, I thought I'd wind my way back down memory lane a bit, towards something I learnt about right at the tail end of A-levels and at the very beginning of university life. Namely, taxonomy and the systems we've used for classifying life. Probably for as long as people have been around on the Earth, we've tried to sort life into different groups. After all, it does make it simpler to discuss and conceptualise if we do so. However, historically, we've also been hampered by the fact that we didn't know the full picture, which predictably meant we drew some incorrect conclusions. For example, Aristotle's classification of life only had two categories right at the top of the pecking order, animals and plants, with organisms being allocated into smaller groupings based on characteristics such as warm-bloodedness or four legs. Although he and his student Theophrastus did leave their mark in the form of modern taxonomic groups such as Narcissus and Crocus, their ignorance about microorganisms and their existence did mean their classification was far from complete. Skipping forwards a bit, in the 18th century, the Swedish botanist Carl Linnaeus created the modern system of taxonomy, including our current binomial system of Latin names for different organisms. Think, for example, Homo sapiens for humans, Mus musculus for mice, and Drosophila melanogaster for fruit flies. Knowledge of different organisms had also improved by this point. As we discussed back in episode 11, Antony von Leeuwenhoek had invented the microscope and discovered microorganisms back during the 17th century. However, despite these advances, Linnaeus still boxed all life into two groups as Aristotle did, plants and animals. So, let's skip ahead again to 1969, when the biologist Robert Whittaker created the Five Kingdom system of classification. These five kingdoms are, specifically, animals, plants, fungi, protists, and monera, which consist of all prokaryotic organisms. Essentially, this taxonomy considered the divide between prokaryotes and eukaryotes to be binary, with simpler organisms on one side, and more complex organisms, the eukaryotes, or those with a nucleus, on the other. This viewpoint would come to be challenged by the American biologist Carl Woese. Woese and his colleagues created a phylogenetic tree of life based on the 16S rRNA gene of different organisms. This ribosomal RNA makes up part of the ribosome, and I was taught that its advantage for phylogenetic purposes is that it contains both single-stranded and double-stranded regions of RNA within its structure. The double-stranded RNA mutates and changes more slowly than the single-stranded RNA, given the fact that fewer mutations will be retained because the two strands won't align properly as a consequence. This means that, in effect, the 16S rRNA has both a fast and a slow clock hand, perfect, in other words, for creating a taxonomy with. What Woes found was that, instead of the binary distinction between prokaryotes and eukaryotes conventional wisdom would have expected, there was instead also a third group, which was as different from both existing groups as these two were from each other. This grouping would, after some initial pushback, eventually come to be accepted, and the three domain system of life was born, consisting of eukarya, bacteria, and the new third group archaea which I will almost certainly come back to some day. This new classification meant that a top rung of classifying was added to Whittaker's initial system. In other words, a species could now be sorted into a domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus or species at an increasingly small scale. As always, thank you all for listening. For any questions, comments or future topic suggestions, feel free to get in touch at the show's email address. And until next time, have a great week, everyone.